All right, here we go. Um, all right, so everybody's good with that. And if you don't have anything, oops, I think uh, we'll just get started. Let me hold on a second. <clears throat> all right, here we go. <clears throat> Welcome in, welcome in to the Bite Me podcast, and uh, it's going to be an eventful one today. I can promise you that uh, I got a huge announcement upcoming, and we're not going to bury it too much. We'll get right to it uh, here near the start of the program, uh, but a couple of particulars out of the way for any of those that are uh, listening. A little bit of an echo there, Scott. Echo there, echo there. Are we good? We can start again here in a minute. Whose was that? I don't know what's going on. All of a sudden, my headphones went out, and then they, they came back up. Maybe okay. uh, maybe go to settings, go to audio, and then where it says echo cancellation, has that been checked off somehow, where it's picking up? Are you using headphones anyway, aren't you? I am right now. Echo cancellation checked. Reduce mic backgrounds checked. That's all I have checked off on mine. Yeah, I wonder if it's. How's your Wi-Fi strength? Uh, seems okay. Hey, while you're there, go ahead and touch up your appearance. <laughs> Are you being funny? <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's the stuff you get on the live feed that you don't get anywhere else. All right, <laughs> or let's let's start this again. Welcome in. Welcome into the Bite Me podcast. Uh, we have a very eventful show for you today, and that's not uh, overselling it. And we're not going to bury the lead. We'll get right to a big announcement here that's going to be pretty dang cool for anyone who is uh, registered for the CCA Texas Star Tournament. An exclusive, uh, and I mean that in every uh, sense of the term, of the word. Uh, it's an exclusive for Bite Me podcast listeners, which should be a good reminder to subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast and uh, join the Facebook group page. We eclipsed 9,900 today, so that's good. We're bearing down on 10,000. And uh, this YouTube channel, uh, where you're watching us live, if you're watching us live uh, on this YouTube channel, be sure to subscribe there as well. All right, so before we get to that, I feel like we have to have one topic right out of the shoot that's uh, been uh, at the front of mind of everybody. Then we'll get to that announcement and uh, get the reaction of all the captains, by the way, I'm John Lopez. If you're new to the podcast, Captain Scott Knoll is right across from me, as is Captain Dean Thomas, as is Captain uh, Caleb McCumber. So first topic right out of the shoot, and I feel like I need to start with Dean on this one. Um, how exactly do you choose the right skin for your knees, especially <laughs> when you're selling your phone? Uh, that's, that, that, that's been, a, that's been a, a topic that has been... Um, you know, on everybody's, frankly, on everybody, I can't believe we've never gotten to it before, but, uh, uh, when you're choosing the right skin for your knees, um, uh, and, and especially when you're selling your phone, which is a key element, how do you do that, Dean? Man. So this morning as I'm driving, <laughs> I'm pulling through and I was actually, I was going out to the pasture. I'm doing some hog hunting here in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I just, I've been selling my boats, talking to people about options and it's just been a topic. And so I was like, man, there's a lot of people probably ask these questions. So I sent that to you and then I set my phone down and never looked at it again. And then you replied with, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I looked at that and I was like, what the hell's wrong with John? I was like, I was like, what is there not to understand? And so I still didn't look at my phone. I made it as clear as day. I, I looked at it like 30 minutes later and then I scrolled back and I was like, oh, okay. I was like, that's crazy. But yeah, it was, um, I was driving, it was dark, it was talk to text, and uh, that's what the phone and it's, hurt. And it's, <laughs> yeah. is, is this the first time in your life that you've needed an interpreter, Dean, or no? <laughs> Probably uh, not. Uh, I don't know if my phone speaks a different language than me. <laughs> well, are you sure it's the phone? Are you sure now? Just the other day, I was I was telling somebody, you know what's cool about the podcast is we got such a good mix of people, and and I don't know if Dean was insulted by this or not, but Scott, I was like, okay, Scott's you know kind of the the sage, you know, the guy that that, that can get into any all the the, the nitty gritty of some of the the science and also the fishing experience. Caleb, you know, obviously you know, new blood. He's he's one of those guys that you know really funny and all that stuff. And then I said, Dean. He just sounds like a fishing guide. <laughs> he just sounds like one. <laughs> like you hear him talking, you're like, yeah, that's a fishing guide right there. 
Sometimes I sound like something else. And now he's gone. <laughs> it was, uh, but no, man, the talk to text gets me a lot, though. Um, I wonder why. <laughs> Siri does speak a different language, though, because we all have that one person with that weird last one name on her phone. Yeah. I got a guy named George I on my phone. Mm -hmm. And if I say call mm -hmm. George I, he mm -hmm. says, I don't see a george eye and i say okay call georgi and she says <laughs> she says okay calling carl george eye or the other times i'll say call georgi and she'll say i don't see that and i'll say i'll oh, call carl george eye she says okay calling carl georgi all right okay <laughs> Cade, Cade learned most of his bad words from me talking to siri <laughs> All right, let's get uh, uh, the, to the, the good stuff here. Um, and and I, I want to get you guys' uh, opinion on this. All right, so here's here's the announcement. I, I, I normally don't do those little teasing videos or something, but I wanted to make sure anybody who was listening, uh, who was subscribed, could, could watch this YouTube and listen to this podcast and get the gist of what I was talking about. Um, so, so here it is, and I'll go to, I'll go to the email I got, Ryan Towns, who's the assistant director. Uh, of the CCA Texas Star Tournament, I was I was trading uh, texts and emails with him, and we came up with a really big idea. And it is exclusive to Bite Me Podcast listeners and people who subscribe to this YouTube channel. So a couple of days, and we're going to nail it down. But a couple of days before the CCA Texas Tournament starts, we're going to do. I'm going to do, and we're going to share it right here and uh, and on the Bite Me group page, a live stream of a tagged redfish release on the on the gulf coast uh i'm gonna i'm gonna set him up with a video or we're gonna set up a, a, a video together um he's gonna be on the boat he's gonna get the tagged redfish you're gonna be able to see you know somewhat where he is including horizons i'll put it this way you probably will be able to figure out uh the gist of where uh he is and they're gonna release into the water a tagged redfish that could be worth, uh, uh, well, is worth uh, more than $100,000. So nowhere else are you going to get this. The, you know, people are always wondering, well, where do you release those? Do you release those? You know, uh, a lot of skeptics out there. Um, and this is, I was really excited when we were talking about this. And I, I'll, I'll read you some of the things uh, that he said. I mean, he said just days before the tournament start, told me where, uh, but it's not, uh, etched in stone just yet so I'm not going to say and by the way when they release it you'll be able to to see where uh, it's going to be on uh, uh, the, like I said a couple of days the tournament starts on May 25th if you don't know and goes all the way till uh, uh, Labor Day uh, September uh, May 25th to September 2nd it's about 100 days of fishing uh, the, the prizes again if you don't know 1.9 million dollars in prizes scholarships uh, they're gonna they're gonna uh, award 18 boats, five trucks, five UTVs because there's an offshore division as well. Three hundred and twenty five thousand dollars in scholarships, and I'm gonna start with Scott on this one because uh, it, it's it's pretty cool. Like we're trying to work out the logistics, but I can tell you we have confirmation on our YouTube page and on the Bite Me group page and on Facebook. Scott, we're going to release. Uh, well, he's going to release live for our listeners, our subscribers, a tagged redfish. And you know, and I know when they release them, they release them in places, Scott, that are very common fishing areas. It's not like some nowhere land. And you know, and I know that a lot of us are always etching out the background of, of where the picture is that you caught this fish. He ain't going to do that. So I think this is one of the coolest things that's really ever been done with the star tournament. So they're going to be able to show the background or not show the background. He he was to... indicating he was indicating there's going to be signs. There are going to be oh. signs, like the horizon. That'll be interesting. That's going to be <laughs> wild, man. Well, I mean, uh, if you just took a map, you could kind of figure out where a lot of the places are. You know, they release mm -hmm. mostly along the intercoastal, from what I've seen in the past. But uh, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. We should get a lot mm -hmm. of views out of that. <laughs> I would um, think we should. We should start a Patreon with now that we're actually giving away good fishing spots. <laughs> hey, I'm, to play. Trying to learn, I'm trying to learn that, uh, by the way. Dean, you think uh, a Saturday in the summer at Aranda's Bay is crowded? 
Man, how's that, I, how's that, how's that May 25th I, gonna be? <laughs> I hope they release that fish over around Sabine or down in Brownsville, <laughs> a long way away was, from me. I was just hoping <laughs> I was hoping at least just a little past Port O'Connor. <laughs> yeah, right in Port O'Connor. <laughs> I, right by so, uh, so in I the live the video, you're gonna see me walking up going, nope, 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 nope. nope. <laughs> try, try somewhere else. Wasn't it public in the past where they re gave the number of how many tagged reds are released yes. and, and yes. the general vicinity. I mean, they release them in popular areas. They want them to be caught. I mean, they want people to win the prizes. And I thought that was documented public somewhere. No, they, but, they do kind of do uh, like general areas, but uh, no, this is going to be like, and, and who knows, Caleb, you know, you, you know, as well as I do, like you're doing a live stream and it's going to be on this YouTube channel. Of, a, of, of anything i mean that camera kind of goes everywhere you kind of see the water then they lift it and you kind of look at the background who knows where he's going to be standing i mean i i am convinced this is going to be and i said this in the video it's not going to be like okay this exact spot but it's going to be kind of a cheat code for narrowing down you know some of the opportunities there, there's times whenever you know you can really you can really skin your feed in that situation <laughs> <laughs> your knees you almost oh. got it right <laughs> yeah, I, I was not going to be on record talking about trying to catch a hundred thousand dollar fish and skinning my knees but you did it so. <laughs> <laughs> you executed remember yeah. i sent you that text the other day i can't believe people walk right into where i'm trying to lead them yes <laughs> <Remember> exactly <that? laughs> yes. I, it, it, I mean i'm sure it's gonna show some stuff around and everything just like i said mm -hmm. hopefully hopefully you see port o'connor signs yeah, and you see what is what's that road uh, that Charlie, you live off of? He's bait camp. Yeah, well, yeah. Right Charlie's yeah. Bait, yeah. Right here. Charlie's bait camp it's, right here. Yes, that's where it's gonna be. Yeah, so I Lane think it's road. Starts, yeah, Lane Road. That was the one I was thinking of. Um, starts on the twenty fifth. I want to say, and we'll let you know when we do it. Obviously, it'll be like the twenty first or twenty second. We're gonna go live with Ryan, and uh, we're gonna release. He's gonna release. A tagged redfish that could be worth a uh, hundred thousand dollars. I, I just thought that was that was really cool, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this uh, how the reaction is on this thing because it's going to be. So <laughs> I guess the rules still apply that guides are not avail or uh, eligible to win. Well, they have a guide <laughs> division where you get into the pool. You know, if your guy, if you have somebody on your boat that catches one, you get into a pool right. for a prize for you. Uh, but but that's about the gist of 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 that. And Kayla brought up a good point when I was texting you guys about this. You know, what about the the the, the lie detector? I'm sure they're they're you know they're sort of baking in some some questions that will make sure like to cover you on that. I mean, you won't they won't go to this extreme and then all of a sudden say nope, sorry, <laughs> you saw the video. No, they won't uh, they won't do that. But it's it's really cool for the listeners. It's something that's really cool that that I'm glad that uh, the you know, the bite me podcast is the exclusive. It's the only place you can find it. It's the only place they're going to do it. All right. So let's get to, now that that's out of the way, let's get to a real topic and the real, uh, topic that, uh, that, that Dean sent. We'll start with that one since we teased it with the, the, the skin knees. Um, what you're, what you're saying is Dean, you've been getting a lot of questions about, uh, choosing, uh, the right, uh, skiff and and some of the things that are uh, for your needs that that's what he was getting at by the way skiff for yeah. your knees not skin on your knees um, but, and the right so, skiff yes. for <laughs> your needs yeah elaborate i shall speak slowly and clearly <laughs> so the conversation has been so i'm putting my um my current scout is going to be for sale. I run them about two years and then I get in a new boat. I sell them while they're in great shape, put a good price on it so that it moves. And I got people that have been inquiring, inquiring about it. So it, it just, I've had a lot of conversations about the variety of boats that are out there. I mean, there's Poland skiffs, there's tunnel hulls, there's V bottoms, there's modified V's, there's catamarans. There's a lot of choices. And a lot of these guys are, you know, if you want to have a personal fishing boat, if you want to go out one or two people, you know, the polling skiff is great. 
You're not going to put the wife and the kids on a Poland skiff and go out and do that kind of a trip. Um, a bigger boat is going to be way more comfortable for a family oriented event. And if you're going to run, exploit the ultra shallow waters, you know, a tunnel hull, a flat bottom is going to get you in and out of a lot of areas that a V bottom or a modified V is not going to get. Even a catamaran, as cool as they are, and the way they have evolved, they still run a little bit deeper than a tunnel hull. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're close, and there's people who will argue that fact with me. And then there's yeah. tower, there's tower boats, and you know, different configurations of consoles, and there's just a lot of variety out there. So whenever you're choosing your boat, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of options out there now, and. Mm -hmm for where we live you know for where you and i fish you're exploiting the ultra shallow flats the 90 percent of the time so shallow water is critical a v bottom is going to slice the waves going to be way more comfortable if you're in bigger bays if you're crossing long areas of deep water it might be a better choice for you and if you want to push around the lakes and the shorelines with a small group one or two people the Poland skiff is, is your thing. Yeah. We just need to really reiterate what Dean said. Polling skiff is a tool. It is not a pleasure craft. It's not even a take your buddies out fishing craft mm -hmm. because you can pole them all day. If you want to hand your buddy that pole and you're not going to have nearly as good a time with it. Uh, the only, the only boat that I didn't hear mention was the flat bottom, which is going to be skinnier than everything, but the polling skiff, but man, you are going to pay the price to get to that shallow water and that flat bottom. Yeah, I was driving. Are. I was driving a flat bottom down the intercoastal the other day with like a light, like a ripple. And I looked at the guy that owns it. Am I driving this thing incorrectly? Because the GPS is about to come off. He's like, "Oh no, that's normal." Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Scott, <laughs> one thing that you've said, and we've had variations of this discussion uh, on you know, know, know what, what you fish, how you fish, what you're going to do. But I, th I like this topic because like everybody can. There's a lot of skinny boats out there, but it's also like what you're going to use the most for where you fish like like what dean was talking about scott you know if i were if i were 10 miles not even 10 miles uh to to i guess that's the the west and i fish copano bay more i would almost need an entirely different boat or i know the the, the warrior can hit those waves i'm just saying like if, if in get in given terms of like flat bottom or maybe a little more v it's also like like where are you going to fish the most yeah that's what i i tell everybody when they start ask me about you know the different boats and what they should get and all that don't get a boat for what you might do get a boat for what you're going to do most the mm -hmm. things that you might do occasionally hey y'all might run the beach front i might run offshore don't buy a boat just because you might do that and then have to mm -hmm. suffer through not having the perfect boat for what you actually do 90 percent of the time right same with how many people you carry you know you you got guys that really want a polling skiff but i might take my wife out you know every couple of years with the kids or something you know, i might take them out once a year yeah well, just get a guide for that get a, you mm -hmm. know pay, pay a guide to go on those the days that you want to go do something different from what your boat's capable of that's when you get the guide yeah and and, and why not get a guide anyway because you, you might help you in some of the other things that you're doing and, and that's something that that a lot of people uh have done last thing on this dean uh and, and then we'll move on like the versatility of boats like my warrior and your dargle we feel like we can go just about anywhere and what scott said what are you going to do the most but there's also a certain level of are you a professional like what caleb said with a polling skiff that's not a that's not a, a pleasure boat uh a boat like yours and mine can be a little bit more versatile but also take into account like how many people you're generally going to have for me it's like two you know, at the most, and you, you, you got to be comfortable in that, in that regard. And even for the most part, if you're taking two <clears throat> on your boat, you have the option to put five people on there. Yeah. I mean, and still exploit the shallow waters and still do that. I mean, I, I put four with me and, you know, can still skim in mm -hmm. very shallow water. Um, and it is, it's, it's very versatile. Even yeah. Like I can, um, even though it's seasonal, 
I can still go offshore and do the kingfish thing in the summertime and run down the surf and that, you know, you still have options. Yeah. Sorry about that. I was giving uh, Scott John a high five. No, there's a, there's a snake in my backyard. Like a <laughs> there's a snake, snake in my boot. There's a snake in my backyard and my, and my wife just got here. And she's like, where, where, where? I don't know what she's going to do, but she wants to see. It's about a two hey, well, long Scott, Scott is the snake specialist. What should she do, Scott? <laughs> what it's should she do? Don't step snake. on it. Chances are good. Chances are it's really funny good you bring that up because my in-laws just pulled up in my yard too. Yeah. <laughs> don't a... go out there. No, they, do, they, do, they, do they listen to this? It's yellow and has like brown circles. So I'm not a snake guy. Uh, but we'll figure out what it is. She just wanted to see it. <laughs> but, All right. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and even if you're purchasing a skiff, if you're out there shopping, take test rides, you know, go with somebody who has one. I see I, the conversation that really led me to all this. I was talking to a guy and we were talking about boats and I was telling him, we work at the boat shows. All of us work at the shows for the dealers and you mm -hmm. see guys that walk in and they get excited, man. They just get the fever and they will spend 90 or a hundred thousand dollars on something that's really not practical for them. They, they pay the price for a bad decision. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's exactly what I was saying the other day, you know, and then six months down the road, you realize that maybe you should have got a different boat. So mm -hmm. be, and be a good um, customer, you know, so shop around, don't make too many snap judgments and, and try to figure out what is best. Cause if that thing's just sitting in the driveway and you're making payments and, it, it's it can be frustrating i see it happen often but the biggest mistake i see people get <clears throat> especially if they want to fish here they buy a bigger boat with bigger horsepower just because the next guy has one yeah if you, that's if the you thing that's to, big if you want to exploit the ultra shallow flats if you want to drift in 18 inches you know even push your limits sometimes in a foot of water those boats are just i mean they don't fish where I do. They can't get there and it's mm -hmm. risky to get there. So it's, um, it's, it's a big decision. It's an expensive decision is what it is. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 uh, I, figures. I have one other, um, scenario I'll lay out and then I've got to, I've got to bounce with the kid, but yeah. there is another scenario where you go over to your buddy's house and get a little bit inebriated and tell him, man, I'd really like to have one of them. And he says, you really need one. And I say, man, that's cool. Yes, I'd really like to have one. I, 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 and then three days later, the boat builder calls you and asks you what color you want that boat to be. And man, I don't even, I don't I, even remember. I don't have, I don't have the ability to give you the down payment. <laughs> and then he goes, that's been covered. What color do you want it? So, well, hell. Okay. <laughs> was that, All right. now, now, Dean, was, I need you to define, was that an impulse buy or no? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Aren't they all, all kind of? Uh, I think well. they are all are. They're By all the way, they're all impulse buys. Word travels fast. This is the this is the highest number of uh, live streamers we've had on this YouTube channel uh, in quite a while. I think people are saying, "Hey man, <laughs> hey man," they're, they're talking about uh, uh, videotaping live where they're gonna where they're going to release the tag redfish. Yes, we will. I'll have more details. Uh, on the group page after we uh, we record this, uh, but uh, certainly it, it, if you're just tuning in, you want to know what it is. Yes, uh, talk to Ryan Towns over at uh, CCA Star Tournament, uh, assistant director. We're going to live stream the release of one of the tagged redfish. All right, so let's get to uh, the next topic, and this is from our listeners, and I like these a lot. We get them all the time. You, I get them a lot. Uh, you can hit me up on any of my social media on the group page, uh, post it, or, or or just DM me. Um, so this is an interesting one. It's a, it's kind of a cautionary tale about wading in mud. And I know both you guys, Scott and Dean have a lot uh, to say on this. He said, is there a trick to it? And I kind of, you know, I don't know. I've heard people saying like, well, you got to walk lightly. What the hell is walking lightly? I, I haven't walked lightly since I was two years old, <laughs> but let me just read the question and we'll get to you first, Scott. 
Uh, guys, and it's not funny at first, but I do want to get your advice for him and, and everybody listening to this podcast. Guys, we had a scare last week. We decided to go waiting and end up ended up splitting relatively far from each other, about 50 yards. One of my friends started waving, and we thought he had a fish. Then he started yelling. So we went over there because we knew something was wrong. It took us a while because the mud was almost knee deep. By the time we got there, he was flailing his arms, trying to stay out of the water. The mud went past his knees, and he couldn't really move. We wound up dragging him out, and the only casualty was his rod and reel, which he ditched, I'm guessing trying to keep his balance. Um, we're, we're somewhat experienced waders, but not hardcore by any stretch. It was scary. I guess I'm wondering if there's any advice or trick to wading in mud or their shoes or anything that works better in mud. I don't want to go through that again. Scott, uh, we've all been there, but maybe not to that extreme. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, if it, if yeah. it starts getting that, that bad and you're in deep enough water, we're going knee deep is going to put you up, you know, chest deep. Uh, you need to back the hell out of there. The only place I ever weighed that was real, real muddy would be real shallow water. I'm talking, you know, six inches to foot of water chasing redfish in some little back back water where, mm -hmm. you know, and that was when I was much younger too. But mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, if it if I'm sinking eh, much over my ankles, I'm I'm pretty much going to back out. Yeah, it's just too much work. Uh, there's too many other places you can go to fish that that don't require that. Uh, yeah. I know that there are some, some guys, one of my old buddies, his grandfather was a commercial fisherman way back in the day. And he made these things out of one by sixes and like skis. Mm -hmm. And he put uh, ski bindings on them. And that's what he wore out there. They were like two, two to three foot long. And he walked with those with a one they by work? six on the bottom of his shoes. Apparently, I mean, he was a commercial netter way back in mm -hmm. the day and mm -hmm. setting out out you know gill nets in muddy areas he walked all over the place him and all his buddies used to do it that way uh, i'd like to see one it'd be kind of cool but mm -hmm. i always just figured i'd hang that sucker up on something and end up flat flat on my face in the mud yeah that's what i'm thinking like you dig it into the mud and you just like yeah. Doink, you just fall right over <laughs> then i can't get up <laughs> yeah, exactly and then you're really screwed you gotta reach for the bindings underwater um dean i, I I mean, there's a lot to cover here on this one topic alone, but um, ambition gets people that big yeah, trout. I, I've seen it. I've seen it go wrong. I have seen that exact scenario that they're talking about. So we kayak fish a lot and <clears throat> people ask me all the time. It's like, do you take your kayak out and step out and wait? I'm like, why would I do that? And then the <laughs> other thing, when you say, when you said like, walk lightly, put an inner tube on your ass, put a, um, Maybe some of them floaties like the little kids use on your legs and <laughs> or screw some tubes lightly. Or screw, That's how you walk lightly. <laughs> or screw some one by six picket fence <laughs> to your feet. Walk lightly um, by putting an inner you know, tube on your all of those all of those things are a ridiculous amount of effort when you can avoid those areas. So when we do weight fishing trips. I find places that I know are favorable to walk, that the mm -hmm. bottom is hard. As we're out running around and we're drifting, I see boats many times that are anchored up and the guys are out of the boat. And I look over there and say, I know what the hell they're going through because I know what the bottom is like there. It is mm -hmm. very difficult. It's not worth the effort. And then when you're wade fishing, you one of the reasons to wade fish is that you're stealthy, is that you're slow and you're quiet. You cannot tromp through shin deep mud Mm -hmm. and be quiet and keep your balance and keep fishing. But I mean, I I've seen guys get absolutely stuck where they're buried and you go over there and you got to pull them out of the mud yeah. Yeah. and, and basically a, a rescue thing and fishing goes out the window, you know, whenever you get into that scenario, but try to, to test it, know what the bottom is. And if it ain't good, turn back quickly mm -hmm. before it gets worse. What about when you're in it, Scott? I mean, so you know, you, you had the best intentions, but sometimes it just happens. Well, the the only way you can get out of it when you really get stuck, and I mean, I've I grew up in Galveston, so I know mud. I mean, there's 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 some serious mud out there. Is 
you kind of you plant your one foot and get it you know as solid as you can you know you've sunk as far as you're going to sink past your knees and then you can just kind of point your toe because you've created a hole there mm -hmm. and uh, with your foot going down and you just kind of point your toe and pull up and hopefully you've got something nearby that you can get a hold of but a lot of times you don't yeah uh, but you just kind of almost lay down sit down mm -hmm. and then just start pulling and sacrifice your shoes because they're probably coming well, off. well yeah that's i was yeah. gonna say you hope your shoe comes back <laughs> with your foot yeah a lot of times it doesn't and yeah. sometimes you're in crocs dean and uh, you lose the croc out there <laughs> well there's places and i don't i don't see i don't advise this to anybody but there's places that i wade fish barefooted where i mean i know what the bottom is i've walked there a hundred times before and I will step with my bare feet and walk around a little bit, but unless you absolutely know what's down there, that's not a good idea. But I've seen people's foot slip out of a wading boot that zipped up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is sucked in the mud so hard that no, when you pull on it, no matter how the boot ain't coming back, you yeah. get your foot back, but then your foot comes out without the boot. And then the next <laughs> step is going to go down on an oyster. Yeah. Everything in that mud is razor sharp and it's going to cut you. And, um, but it does happen. It's how you learn. The hard lessons are the ones you never forget. And yeah. um, that's you you don't some people don't do it twice, but some of us are slow learners. <laughs> I got a, I got a picture somewhere of Dean. We're out fishing in the lighthouse lakes in the kayaks. I look over and he's sitting in his kayak, but he's leaning over to the side and he's he's reaching around down on the bottom and he's feeling around. He's doing stuff. <laughs> I paddle over there and I get there just in time to take a picture of him pulling a croc up out of the mud. Yeah. <laughs> Back when he used to wear crocs in his kayak. Yeah, and, and put the feet down and just tippy toe across the bottom. Lightly. Um, <laughs> and you still lost. <laughs> yeah, come home with one shoe. I mean, we all know, you know, that I talked about this earlier, Scott, the ambition, you know, you want to catch that big trout. Well, they're in the mud, you know, they're, you know, that that's where you go. Boy, I mean, you hit it like I, I want it as much or more than anyone. But boy, you, you, you just at some point, you just got to draw the line. It's common sense, like everything else when you're on the water. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's different types of mud, too. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. there's some of that. You know, you'll find out why God gave you a crotch, you know, <laughs> to stop you from sinking completely in there. But, uh, you know, I think Dean's rubbing off on you. The the line. Line. <laughs> stop, stop you from sinking. That's right. <laughs> that's that's one of the bad ones. And I've been in a couple of those and it ain't fun. Yeah. It's a weird feeling, man. As you, you start going down, you know, we all grew up with the whole, every show on TV. You know, my biggest fear growing up was quicksand. You know, Gilligan's yeah. Island, everything had quicksand. You know, I thought yeah. quicksand was going to be a much bigger issue as I grew up, but uh, <laughs> it turned out it's really not there. But there is some mud that's like quicksand, and when you start that downward spiral there, it's like, man, when am I going to stop? And, mm -hmm. you know, the top of the yeah, water is getting your off buddy, close. <laughs> your buddy's uh, wading away from you, and then you look over there, and all you see is his hat floating on the water. <laughs> <laughs> why are you getting short i will <laughs> exactly I, I will say I, i've i've weighed fished with some guys that i'm amazed like they're in the same mud that i am and they're just like prancing around like nobody like nothing's going on and they're walking lightly i guess they're I, walking lightly i don't know what it is I, i've seen some muscle through it too yeah. i mean I've, I've seen them do it <laughs> it's just not my cup of tea man but of course yeah the kayak you float over it it gets you into those areas silently way more quieter than walking and instead of going through it you just float over it so kayak is a good option and if you don't want to launch your kayak from land you put your kayak in the boat take it to that spot and yeah. throw it out and then go that route but it's the thing so all flats are not created equally either so areas where the tide flows a lot is going to wash out a lot of that sediment and it leaves the sand behind it leaves a harder bottom <clears throat> pockets that don't feel a lot of tide is going to deposit that mud 
for eons, just mud on mm -hmm. sediment, on mud, and it gets very mushy. So here around Aransas Pass, Port Aransas, Rockport, all of the outside barrier islands, outside of Ransom, Dagger, Trailer Island, all along Quarantine Shoreline, Harbor Island, beautiful places to walk. It's like walking on a sidewalk. It's hard mm -hmm. sandy bottom, miles and miles of very weightable water. But if you move to those flats in the middle of a flat that just doesn't feel a lot of tide, you just got to expect mud to be there. Yeah. So you can kind of narrow down your search to what's going to be more favorable. And just like Scott said, the back lakes in Galveston, there is no bottom in there. Mm -hmm. There is yeah. no bottom anywhere in those lakes. And if it goes wrong and you end up in a bad situation, it only goes to worse from that point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's get another listener question here. Then we got a couple of other topics that are uh, more uh, about uh, this time of year and fishing this time of year. But this is another listener question um, about pushing into the back lakes and marshes or staking out ambush points. And I'm guessing, well, let me read the question. Uh, back in the marsh, tide is incoming and also wind driven into the marsh. Uh, so there's plenty of bait throughout the marsh, but waters are a little too dirty. Uh, to site cast is it better to stake out an obvious ambush point waiting on some fish to show up or just keep going back until you run into some fish i think i know scott's answer but you may surprise me on this one uh he said it was definitely an issue this past weekend that's what made him think about the question so when when going that way tide going that way dirty water we've all seen it uh do you stake out the ambush point or you just keep pushing i keep pushing yeah, I'm I'm going to go explore and go find the fish. Uh, I don't I'm not real big on staking out an ambush point. You know, you're just counting on maybe fish coming by there. Mm -hmm. uh, when the water gets too dirty to sight cast, change lures. You know, if you're talking Galveston, Sabine, Matagorda when it's a little bit dirty, uh start throwing spinner baits and fan cast. Uh use a lure that you can Real, real quick. Spinner bait's perfect for that. Uh, there's not a lot of finesse to it. You're just chunking and winding. And, and you just make the best of your day. You know, okay, sight casting's out today. You'll still be able to sight cast some fish from wakes. You know, toilet, toilet bowl flushes up against the bank. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some tailored fish, fish with their backs out. You can do that kind of sight casting. But yeah, when that, when that Galveston Sabine water gets stained, and muddy there's not a lot you can do with it you just got to make some noise and have some flash uh like i said my go-to is always a spinner bait dean well patience is not one of my finer virtues yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> as a as an angler i'm tested quite often with do you want to set and kind of work on something coming to you I'm always going to move around. I'm always going to be switching changes. And I couldn't have said it better than Scott did. I tell people all the time, <clears throat> you're looking for different signs, the swirls, the pushes, the less obvious signs, even where the, the ripples on the water, like the waves just are different in a little area. Mm -hmm. It can be very subtle things to um, think, but I mean, I'm always going to start looking, I'm going to, I'm going to hit those spots and I'm going to give them a good effort. But once you get the feeling that they're just not there, you got to move on and keep searching. Um, uh, sometimes I feel like, uh, you know, you, you validated so much because what I was thinking, uh, Dean is what Scott said about, I, I would throw something clunky. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm going to throw a popping cork, but also spinner bait, uh, something that makes that, that noise. What, what else would be in your arsenal for the dirty water aspect? Well, in, in the last few days, we've actually been confronted with that issue here in Aransas Pass. Mm -hmm. I fished in 40 mile an hour wind a couple of days ago. It was not fun. We stuck it out. How many bags? It was, it was brutal. Three bags, <laughs> dragging, a lot of power pulling down and being patient. So we were throwing big, big um, paddle tails, big, bright pink, the pink um, K wigs, the Flamingo. Mm -hmm. Big yeah. old paddle tail with a quarter ounce weedless hook. I mean, it's like chunking the anchor out there, but it's one of those options that 
puts a lot of vibration in the water and the water's rough. I mean, there's so much noise in the water when it's windy like that. You got to really make a commotion for the fish to find it. So something that's going to pump a lot of vibration, brighter colors, something with some flash. It, it was what worked for me. Is it but weedless like, season? Is it weedless season? Is the grass coming back real strong? Yeah. Yep. It's, it's growing fast. How about and, where you are, Scott? I know you don't have a lot. Yeah, yeah, water, yeah. water temperatures are getting on up there, you know, 72, 73. Mm -hmm. Grass is going to be growing pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Get, getting some sunshine on it most days. So, yeah, it's going to come on up. It's it's weedless season. Yeah, it's weedless season. So, uh, helpful hint there. And, and, of course, we'll get to uh, what would Scott do, what would Caleb do, uh, and what would Dean do here in, in just a little bit. Um, all right, so here's another one, and it's actually boating related as well. And I want to say we, we've covered this about two years ago, to be honest. Uh, but it was a question uh, that I got about scouting a trip when you're in San Antonio, when you're in, let's say, Houston, and, and you got to pull your boat. Uh, you know, any of these inland Dallas, you know, any of these inland cities, um, like, how do you scout? I know this is not something that any of us really do, but we've all done. Like, you got to hook up the boat from your garage. You know, you're trying to scout, I'm going fishing, you know, tomorrow or the next day or tomorrow or whatever. Um, but I want to might right pick the right day. You know, are there any, like, if you're not out there all the time, and I know we've touched that, but like you're dragging your boat, like what are you, what are some of the go-tos that you look at when you're going to, you know, whether it's Aransas Pass or Port O'Connor or, or Sabine or wherever, you're dragging the boat. You hate, you know, it's kind of like you hate to have that all go through all that and then really miss on a good day go ahead scott i i would say you know we've got all this information at our fingertips these days on online so you know you're going this weekend i'd start on monday tuesday start looking at what the weather has been doing what the trends are uh look at tides online look at your spots uh try to figure out you know is the water going to be higher than normal or is it going to be lower than normal uh, what's the wind going to be doing? Which direction is it going to be blowing? You know, we got clouds, we got sunshine, you know, all those little things that that we look at every day uh, just kind of come natural to us. And, you know, that's the first thing Dean and I look at in the morning. You know, we wake up and start thumbing through and looking at all of that. Uh, mm -hmm. Even when you're not fishing, go ahead and keep an eye on it. And then you can kind of watch the trends and kind of start getting a game plan together. Dean? I mean, there's a lot of data out there. It's a lot easier than it used to be. You have the Bite Me podcast Facebook page. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're just, it's, a, it's, it's yeah. a good, and it, and it happens every day. It's like, hey, guys, I got a trip coming up. I'm headed yeah. somewhere I've never been before. Any clues or helpful hints? Whenever I was a um, couple times a year, um, I go bass fishing the tournaments with my buddy, Kevin. He invites me to join him. I go to YouTube and I will um, search up, you know, bass fishing on Choke Canyon and, and watch some videos. You get a good general idea. And no matter what, who you ask on the Internet or how many videos you watch, when you get there, you have to do the legwork. <clears throat> but it will kind of narrow down the search. It gives you a starting point. It gives you, it always made me kind of feel better. <clears throat> like I was somewhat ahead of the game. If I did a little um, research on where I was going, but then <clears throat> when you get there, the tide is going to be what it is. The wind is going to be what it is. And then you have to work within those parameters, but it's not easy. I mean, me and Scott used to drive. We've told the story before, man. We drove across the country. We went to an area that we had never fished before. We had the maps. We tried to meet local people that would be friendly enough to give us a little helpful advice. And this was before the age of the internet when we were doing that. Yeah. We were using paper maps and just talking to people. And it narrowed down the search. You get advice on local baits and lures and stuff and certain areas but then you still got to jump in the water and start casting. But to when you go to, you got this giant body of water, you know, miles and miles, you know, where is the spot that you throw your lure? You yeah. know, you're looking at a needle in the haystack when you take off. 
<laughs> but you go there, you start looking for the signs. And well, here's here's the one area. Not to this step is one out of the, in muddy in the mud. One of the very few topics where I have the most recent experience doing this, because uh, for several years, decades, uh, I would drag my boat everywhere. And what I've told people uh, that, they're, that they're either with fishing with me or, you know, whatever, they're going to meet me down there. Let's not be tied down to one base system. That's the one advantage you have when you're dragging your boat, especially from the Houston area and San Antonio area. Like the, I would take a buddy. I say, hey, let's go fishing this weekend. And then I would start looking at all these things. All right. What does Sabine look like? What does Port O'Connor look like? What does Matagorda look like? I would never really drag my boat down to where we are now, but it was either one of those three bays. Like you actually have one advantage over the rest of us that keep boats in certain bays. You don't have to go to that bay. You don't, you don't have, like sometimes Sabine was like, it looked like it was going to be fire. Uh, and, and the second thing is, is one of the reasons I would, I would go to Sabine instead of East Matagorda. I look at NOAA, at the salinity, at the tides, what they've been doing. Like a lot of people, well, you know, I'm at a disadvantage when I'm dragging my boat, Scott. That's true, but you have an advantage unless you're going to a specific tournament or something. Like I would sometimes decide on Friday morning, you know, that I'm we're going, I'm going to Sabine instead of East Matagorda, you know? Yeah, our, our trips when I was, you know, working on the police department, you know, I'd, I'd be busy all week and I couldn't even pay attention to what the weather had done. And then we'd be up going – in the morning, you know, my buddies be like, well, where are we going? I, I, I'm not sure yet. We'll figure it out on the way down. <laughs> You're driving. And we'd be driving <laughs> down 45 and we go past uh, that uh, gay Pontiac. Mm -hmm. 45 had the huge flags and McCree Ford and Dickinson. And uh, we'd see those huge flags. And that was my first clue. You know, I was looking mm -hmm. at those flags and seeing what they were doing. If they were standing up, eh, okay, we're probably going to go to West Bay because it's a little more protected. Mm -hmm. And if they were, if they were laying down, now maybe we're gonna hit the hit the dike and run on across the east bay and go hit some deep reefs and uh do some of that if it was really ripping we're gonna we're gonna end up in a marsh somewhere and then yeah. as i got a little bit closer you'd see the marsh down there around tiki in that area and that's where we got our idea of how high the tide was I mean, yeah. we had tide charts but they were you know as we all know the tide charts way off a lot of times by you know a foot or more and mm -hmm. so as we get closer, we'd start looking, you know, looking off to the sides and seeing what the, what the actual water level was. And then that made a determination of where I was going to launch. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was some launches that I couldn't go to. So you're so far ahead of the game these days by being able to look all this stuff up instead mm -hmm. of just doing it by the seat of your pants as you're on your way down there. Yeah. Uh, so take advantage of all that. You know, yeah. look at everything. Look, look at the salinities. Look at the wind. Um, was there a big flood? You know, in in uh, on the Guadalupe somewhere. You know, if there was a big flood up in Austin a week ago, San Antonio Bay is probably going to be out. You know, you're not yeah. going to want to go to San Antonio, but it's going to be probably fresh. Mm. Uh, yeah, those type type things are what you need to be looking at. Uh, not the day before you're going, a week before mm -hmm. you're going. Yeah. There were, there were times somebody would ask me, Dean, where are we going? I said, well, somewhere in this 250 mile vicinity is where I'm going. <laughs> it's either as far north as Sabine or all the way down to, to East Matagorda or Port O'Connor. I mean, that is part of the crazy game that we play out there. Mm -hmm. um, some days you have a really good idea. I mean, I go through the same thought process when I'm pulling out of the marina. I mean, I'm going into Redfish Bay between Rockport, Port Aransas, and Ingleside, or maybe the backside of, Corp <laughs> of Mustang Island. And I still, from the time I back out of my slip until I get to the intercoastal, I'm just agonizing over <laughs> I've which damn way am I going to turn <laughs> every single day. I mean, I look at the flags as I'm idling out the, um, out the channel. You know, mm -hmm. you got the bait house flags and the flags that are there. And... I'm making that deci that decision right up to the last moment. And then, you know, how deep is the tide today? Am I going to be able to go across the bay? Am I yeah. going to be pinned down over here? So, I mean, I there's not a real easy answer to that question. You know, a lot of these questions that we get are, are not always easy. They make you ponder. Yeah. Well, that's what's good about it. 
But that's what if, you're, if, if this was etched in stone, if there were answers, definite answers to these questions, I don't think the fishing game would be as intriguing as it is. The mm -hmm. fact that we sit here and try to figure it out is part of the fun. Yeah. And yeah. if you if we could sit here and tell you the answer, you know, it I, I don't that's what keeps people going to the shows, going to YouTube tuning into the podcast and trying to figure it out. There's so many variables and no matter how many days I idle out that channel, looking <laughs> at that bay, there's things to figure out and you're rolling the dice. And at I the end of the day, man, after, after, a, after a tough day, you know, you've been struggling, you've been fishing four or five hours and you, and I tell them, it's like, okay, I got another idea. And the guys <laughs> look at me and they're going, Oh, you saved the best for last. And it's yeah, like, sure. I was like, no, we went there first and we're throwing darts we're at the map. Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're throwing but, darts. Scott, I know map. you've seen it. Like, I, I'll get on the boat with Dean or something. And so, what are you thinking? You run out of room. That's you get to the end of the channel and you got to hit the throttle and you got to make gotta go somewhere <laughs> Man, i'm thinking i can't tell you how many times back when we were kayaking i'd be following him down there i would have my kayak in the back of my truck he said i'll oh, just follow me to the launch it's all right mm -hmm. and i'd be following him down there and he'd have his left blinker on like we're going into lighthouse lakes and all of a sudden he'd slow down i'd see the brakes and he's got his left blinker on like all right and all of a sudden he'd turn so right hey <laughs> the, the exact words right in the middle of turning he changes mind so when people would come down and I got my kayak and all my rig in my truck and they're following me in their rig, I would exactly what I told them. I said, if it appears as though I'm wandering around aimlessly, it's because I am. <laughs> and you go over the bridge and you look at the wind and you look at those things. And yeah, man, you pull in and it's like, you just don't get that warm, fuzzy feeling about this one. And you, you, you shift gears. Uh, I told them, say, I tell him, I said, I've, I've not been drinking this early, <laughs> but it's going to drive right. me to drinking later. Yes, but it is. It's, um, it's, it is part of the process. You do have to shift gears some days. Scott used to always laugh at me because I would tell him I was agonizing over the decision. And he's like, your biggest decision is go right or left. Because there's a <laughs> causeway down the middle of the bay and you're either going to this side or that side. And he's yeah. like, why? Why are you tripping out? It's yeah, it's you, flip a coin. You guys don't sell yourself short now. I, I can't tell you how many how many listeners or people I've met out and about. They're like, man, I went fishing with Scott or I went fishing with Dean or Caleb or whatever. Like, we you know we 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 caught some fish, but man, it was just great just listening to them talk about. See, and we've talked about this. Like sometimes you don't even know how much you know, you know, because like we just say stuff. You guys just especially just say stuff, and and then our listeners are like, oh wow, hadn't thought of it like that. So. Yeah, it can be agonizing, but uh, yeah. don't sell yourself yeah, I short. Say I, the, um, I always say the fish don't know who I think I am. Yeah, we said that the other day. Do they know yeah. who the, who do they know who's they, on the, they on this yeah. the ride? Do they know who I think I am? They don't. <laughs> they don't. They do not, and they do not <laughs> earlier, care. Earlier, Dean was talking about talking to your buddies, you know, and getting getting insight, mm -hmm. you know, for a new place. And sometimes they'll send you to the poopy plant. Uh, <laughs> to the poopy plant yeah have we ever told that story no oh, i need to hear the so. poopy plant so we're in man was that tampa florida tampa yep tampa florida oh and we got man. this tarpon we got this tarpon guru who was which one was that one of the <laughs> local guys if I, I swear we don't i don't like to name names but if we think of his name we would we're gonna him. name his name <laughs> so me and Scott, man, we wanted to get that tarpon while we were there. And so we're talking to these guys and we got to know him pretty good. And he was like, gave us these directions. You go over this freeway. And this was under the freeway in downtown Tampa. Mm -hmm. And it was the outflow of the sewage plant. <laughs> <laughs> we got I there mean, in the dark. There was floaters. Ah, yeah. Oh, floaters. Oh phone oh, oh, no. and we were paddling out there and we were both like do not touch this water man. Do not <laughs> put your hand in this um and even where we parked he sent us this parking lot this dude's coming by in a bulldozer and a dump truck and they're looking <laughs> at us like what the hell 
Why would he do that to you? I thought and he was. They were like, man. "Why? Why are y'all here?" And I'm sure they saw Texas license plates and were like, "Have a good time, boys." Yeah, y'all catch him up. <laughs> I can tell you though, there was a ton of tarpon in there. There was tarpon I mean, there. there. Was tarpon everywhere in there. So you think he was serious or was just jacking with you? He was seriously jacking with us. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll give you his name. Yeah. Dean, Dean wouldn't give you his name. It's old Dave Robinson. Was it Dave? Daver? It was Dave. Dave R. He's the one that, that sent us all there. Yes, that's yeah. Carrie knows Dave also. And you remember the first thing we did when we got back? I mean, changing lures was like, uh, oh, we don't want to hold my lure. Yeah, I, lure I don't even off, want to think know? about it. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm just gonna oh. reach over the side and just cut it and let it fall in the water. Yeah. Oh, and, and you, there's it's impossible not to get wet, not to get so, that stuff on you. If you can imagine, so where Buffalo Bayou, like right over there where you, near where you live, John, mm -hmm. where all the freeways I-10 come together and yeah. Buffalo Bayou, that is exactly what it looked like. The skyline was here, <laughs> that we were under the freeways, and it was a river. Like, But I don't know if it was a man-made river. It was the outflow, and we named that place Poopy River. <laughs> <laughs> so did you catch anything? Did. <laughs> it, we didn't hook them we, we didn't hook a fish but they were rolling i mean there were five and six foot tarpon big tarpon just rolling around us and we couldn't get them to hit and the first thing we did when we got out of there with that little convenience store <laughs> Used up half the soap in their bathroom. Get some, get some yeah. wet wipe. Get some wet yeah. wipe. Start bathing yourself. Yeah, I mean, there was a film on the kayak. It was nasty, man. It was. Uh, it, how have I was, not heard this story before? We did not return to Poopy River ever. Well, it was not again. a proud moment, so we don't talk about it much. Yeah, I guess. I guess you got got, as the kids like to say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right, one more here, and then we'll get to what would Scott do and what would Dean do. Um, and this one uh, is actually not from a listener. This was one I was fishing uh, with. I think it was – we were fishing with your son, I think. Um, and we had caught some fish. Uh, yes, because we'd caught some fish the day before with the Livingstons, and, and we were over on, on in one particular area, and the fish were kind of up against this shallow area. And then the wind changed, Dean. And I know Scott's going to have something to say about it, but I'm going to start with you. The wind changed and started blowing pretty dang hard. And so well, you and I were talking about, you know, with the wind change like it was, the wind was actually, so, you know, uh, working as a tide or a tide enhancer or whatever. So it's something that I think our listeners can, can pick up on. Just because you caught fish with a particular wind in a particular area, once the wind picks up, it starts going in one direction, especially if the tide's moving, that's going to change where you fish, right? Absolutely. So that since that day, the wind has not quit blowing. It started blowing that day, and it has not quit. Yeah. And kind of on the same subject, but not to change the subject, last two or three weeks we've been talking about April and how um, the changing conditions we're going to be dealing with – when we fished with the Livingstons was the last day we had some primo conditions to throw the troll motor down, be precise, target fish and catch fish. Since then, the tide has been two feet high mm. and it's been two feet low. And the wind has blown from the south 30 to 25, 30 miles an hour, gusts to 45 yesterday. We got off the water early. It became a, a futile attempt. We fished right. And then this morning is a north wind at 25 miles an hour. And the tide fell off the chart. Gone. So mm -hmm. every time something changes, the currents change, the bait move, and the fish move with them. And they get in a nasty little attitude. And just like Glenn here was asking on the, on the question about changing lures and seeing these things and just can't get them to bite. There's going to be a lot of that this month. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just going to be that way every time the wind changes directions. So, Scott, I but the wind, it can no help you. Where Glenn, was, where Glenn what? I don't know where Glenn was fishing when he's talking about 61 degree water temperatures. I'm, you know, I, uh, that's pretty dang cool mm -hmm. this time of year. I don't, 
I'm not sure where old Glenn was at, but uh, a lot of times this time of year, you know, he was asking, you know, he saw bait swirling and stuff, but mm -hmm. if the reds are not eating what you're, what you're throwing, slow it down and go to the bottom and try to throw something that looks like a crab. Uh, there's a mm -hmm. lot of times that that's, that's what's happening is there's a crab hatch going on this time of year and they're, they're eating little bitty crabs and they get clued in on those. They just mm -hmm. forget about everything else. And yet the drift socks have been coming up covered in baby crabs. All right. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that has me thinking about, uh, our guy, Mark Nichols. I was texting with him the other day. Cause I, I, I was throwing that snake that he gave me. I was so intrigued by that thing. I, I told Dean, I was like, tell me when we're getting on some mud here. Cause I want to throw that snake. I want to throw that snake. I want to catch a, a redfish on a big trout on that snake. He has those little crabs too. I was on the website. Yeah. The, the, those are, those are, it's prime time for that right now. Isn't it? Yeah. He, you know, little small crab, uh, bugs jigs are mm -hmm. excellent when the crabs, when they, when they get on the crabs, uh, that little bugs jig, it, you can crawl it along the bottom and it's got a little scoop on the front end of it. The, the mm -hmm. weight is flat and uh, it, it kicks mud up. And a lot of times that that'll draw the fish over to it when you start bumping it on the bottom, kicking some mud up. And mm -hmm. when it's like that, I mean, those reds will get so focused on looking down into the grass. You can drag, you can see them and you can drag things right over their head and they're just not going to put the effort into turning around and getting it. And yeah. the fish that you do clean are just loaded with baby crabs. And I mean, they're like quarter sized. Yeah. Pretty yeah. decent right now, but yeah, they, um, they get focused on the bottom and there is a bunch of those right now. And you mix in crazy finicky fish with changing wind directions and dramatic tide shifts. And I mean, you just got to expect some challenging days. Yeah, y'all gonna make. By the way, Mark Nichols from uh, DOA, you're gonna make me go on and, and get me a couple of those little crabs because I am going again, of course, this week. Although that would be a good transition uh, to what would Scott do and what would Dean do. Speaking of getting out early, Dean, uh, I was looking at Friday and Saturday earlier. I don't know how much has has changed here, but uh, I may need to get out early. That wind's still going to be howling pretty good, isn't it? Uh, for for this week, uh, at least where you are, and then we'll get to Scott. Well, yeah. So here we go. Get on the roller coaster with me. <laughs> today, yeah. north wind. And compared to yesterday, today was fishable. But mm -hmm. I rescheduled my today trip till Thursday after the beatdown we took. I felt so horrible. It's like I could not put anybody else through that. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, the, um, for today, we moved it. I had the day open. And a guy was still in town, so we rescheduled. But the next two days, absolutely beautiful. Behind this front, tomorrow, six-mile-an-hour wind, nine-mile-an-hour wind, Thursday, nine, ten, Friday, mm -hmm. beautiful, coming up to 12. And then Saturday, here we go. Yep. Get on the roller coaster because it's going to be 25 in the morning, 35 in the afternoon. And then Sunday, here we go, nine miles an hour. Um, it's if you like a variety, you came to the right place. It might be a little rain on Saturday too, as I'm looking at. Uh, it. yeah, you can't trust that down here. That's wishful thinking. <laughs> uh, roller coaster, oh, roller coaster, Scott. Yeah, uh, same thing. Dean was saying, man. I I was looking at. You know what day to slip out i got some guys coming in they're going to be here for three or four days and they just wanted to fish with me one day and they're bringing their own boat mm -hmm. and uh, so we're going to go tomorrow and uh, do a little polling around show them around some places uh, but there's so much changing and you know we we were talking earlier about making your plans uh man, it's so hard this time of year to make your plans because mm -hmm. Like Dean said, super high water, super low water, super high water, a lot of wind, no wind. All those things move fish. They move bait. They move everything around. They move the tides different. Yeah. Uh, so you, it's, it's, I I consider it kind of the shotgun approach. I've got about four or five places in mind that are all different kinds of territory. 
you mm-hmm. know, one's one softer bottom, one's more grass, one's a hard bottom, got some back lakes, got some open shorelines. And I'm going to go try out each one and see, see what the hell the fish are doing, see which way they went. Uh, the water's, I was just looking at the water a second ago. Mine's right back up again. It was down yeah. super low yesterday and it's, it's, it's up in up. the bushes right yeah. now. <laughs> 1.6. Right. And yep. like I two just, o'clock this morning, it was at zero. That quick. Yeah. Yes. Oh man. So yeah. And, and so and when and, you were saying when you were saying how low it was, it got me. I was like, wait a minute, it wasn't like that. And I looked, <laughs> I looked and, to make sure I was I was looking at the right day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so here, here's my pro tip of the day. This is what I deal with when that happens. So 12 hours ago, 14 hours ago, the water was low. It came up that high. Those fish are not going to move up against that grass. There's you. I look at where the tide was 12 hours ago. Where mm-hmm. was it 24 hours ago? I'm going to go back. Even though that grass is flooded, I don't expect fish to be up in that grass. I expect them to be where they were left 12 yeah. hours ago. So I'm going to still fish deeper flats, the drop-offs, if it was that low <laughs> within the last 12 hours. Man, you're going to make me reschedule, hours. Make me reschedule my five. trip till yeah. Sunday morning. Uh, hopefully no rain. Well, By the way, and, and throw in some fog too, just just look, for just for fun. Hey, the roller coaster is going to take a lot of turns between now and Saturday. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. We'll ch- we'll check it out, uh, Scott. You look like you still are, are, are amazed at something that's going on. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, when I looked this morning, the winds were like Dean was talking about. It was stupid, blowing it off the charts. You know, mm-hmm. out on the bay. Here at the house, it was fine. I mean, it was. You know, five to ten miles an hour at the house. I'm only a mile or mile and a half inland, but out on yeah. the water, it was a whole different ball game. And now I just glanced at it, and it's seven. <laughs> it was, it was twenty six earlier. And, uh, so somebody turned the fan off. And, yeah, uh, it's it's not blowing near as much. And then tomorrow, you know, it's just less than ten throughout mm-hmm. the whole day. So it's going to be kind of interesting. I got a lot of sunshine tomorrow. So yeah. we'll be able to see fish, hopefully. And yeah. uh, I went we can get uh, in the right places. <laughs> I went shoe shopping in Corpus Christi today. Um, Carrie took advantage of my day off. Yeah. To, she took advantage of me on my mm-hmm. day off. You got and some Corpus, crocs. Corpus Christi Bay was scary, man. Um, going across there, just the waves were raging, the water's filthy. And even so, tomorrow with all the wind. I mean, it's not going to be cleared up like we want it to be in one day. There's going to be a lot of pockets of dirty water out there. All right. Uh, cool. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> woo, baby, that's uh, that's that's one way to really get you fired up for the. You old might want to take Jan shoe shopping on Saturday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, boy, she's been buying stuff. Why, why do women buy so much stuff for a trip? Like, dude. You, man, look, I was, for those who don't I know, we're going to Costa Rica. We're going to Costa Rica. To kick, yes. I had to kick Carrie off the computer at 325 because <laughs> she's on Amazon. She's like, yeah. look at these. And I'm like, uh, yeah, they're cute. Let's go. And then they expect you to have your entire wardrobe selected a week out. Like she goes, well, what are you going to take for this day? And for this, I was like, I'll oh. let you know. I'll let you know Friday night. I got my, oh, I got my wardrobe selected. I can tell you what he's going to wear. It's what he wears to work. It's what he wears. Yes. Every, exactly. Yes. He's going to have a fishing shirt on. I'm yes. traveling with a backpack. Is but what it's I'm like with. they got to buy brush, new flip flops. New flip flops. Yeah. New this. New that. I was like, you got you got flip flops coming out the kazoo, man. I mean, <laughs> what's going on? I wish. Oh, well. I wish the box. <laughs> Was here because I would love to show it, y'all what yeah. Carrie bought today. Yeah, but it, it is what it is, I guess. But yeah, the blouses and that, and and she already asked me, did you bring my gloves? Did you bring my gloves? She's worried about her gloves because uh, she's worried. She, she, she by the way, she's a little worried about just fishing in general. She goes, I, we watched a we watched a, a YouTube video of fishing in, in uh, Costa Rica. And like I said, uh, uh, Dean and Carrie and Jan and I are going to be going to Costa Rica for a week uh, a week after this, this next one. 
And she's like, I can't do that. I, yeah, you can. It's all leverage. She goes, leverage? That, that fish weighed 200 pounds. I was like, yeah, nah. you can't. It's, nah. <laughs> it's all leverage. The, it's boat, all the boat's going to chase it for you. But yeah. it, it's going to be fun to uh, to watch that. Yeah. We, we just need some cooperation from the big fish. Yeah, we do. All right, boys. That was really uh, that was really uh, informative. That was a good one. Uh, this podcast. And don't forget, I'm going to post everything uh, about uh, what we're going to do with uh, the star tournament uh, on the on the group page, so everybody will know. Don't forget to subscribe uh, to this uh, YouTube channel. We're going to do it live, a live release of a redfish. If you're just uh, catching up with this podcast toward the end, we prefer you listen to it all, but we understand sometimes people have to come in and out. We are going to be the only place you can see a live release uh of a tagged redfish uh, that could be worth uh up to a hundred thousand dollars on this channel on our group page and on this podcast uh so we'll get what you details we, of that what What's day that? are you working on what day are you working on for that a couple of days before the tournament begins the tournament begins may 25th so it's going to be two or three days like 21st 22nd in there i'll have all the details though uh okay. and i'll tell you exactly which uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll show live, you know, which base system, uh, it's going to be in. And, and, um, you know, you know how it is. You're probably going to be, get some context clues and, and get a little bit of a cheat code there. It's, it's pretty exciting, pretty cool. And they're excited about it too. I mean, they, that's the thing. I think Scott mentioned it. They want people to catch these fish. The, the, yeah. the, boat, the boats the are already thing. purchased. This isn't like some trade deal. No, they right. bought, they bought everything. Like uh, otherwise they have to donate it to like some CCA group or whatever. No, the, they want people to win these. And prizes. the more people that win are going to have, it's going to have more contestants next year. Exactly. So, exactly. I mean, they want, and they put a, a vast majority of those fish are right out here in front of Rockport and Aransas pass. The tagged fish get caught right mm -hmm. here. I mean, yeah. every year, every year there's three or four of them. Every basic the bay. They release them up and down the course. So I'm really excited about that, and we'll get you more details. Uh, all right, boys, that was a lot of fun. Very informative. Good technique stuff, good bait stuff, good uh, 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 stuff all the way around. Uh, you guys, uh, we will uh, see you next week. Uh, same time, same place. Uh, don't forget to subscribe everywhere on the YouTube channel, on the Bite Me group page, and certainly uh, on uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, we'll talk to you guys next time. And, and until then, catch them up, and we will see you next time.